You place. are not going to see much emotion from our guy, Brett. This dude is a man David Katz keeps to himself. He's a man of business. He's not here for the experience and to go out, this, that, and the third. He's not here to make friends. He's all business. He's focused. And to even get him to open up to talk to you about anything, it's it's like pulling teeth, man. He was heading back to his... Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another New Year on Realist. Yesterday, Sunday, August 26, 2018, in Jacksonville, Florida, many of you, uh, you know already that there was a shooting at a Madden football tournament in the uh, Jacksonville Landing Complex about 1.34 in the afternoon Eastern Time. Uh, two men were killed. Both players uh, in that uh, eSports tournament, 11 others were injured with uh, 9 of the 11 injured coming from gunshot wounds. The two men who were killed were Taylor Robertson, uh, going by the gamer tag, spot me please. Uh, he was 27 years old, lived in West Virginia, and uh, Taylor Robertson was married and a father of a young son, unfortunately. Um, EA, EA Sports says that Robertson had won 13 out of his last 18 matches uh, in the Madden NFL tournament, so that, that's a very impressive record. The other man was a young a young man named Eli Clayton, um, gamer tag true boy. Uh, he was only 22 years old, and he was from Woodland Hills, California, so he'd come a long way to compete in that tournament in Florida. So this wasn't some local LAN party or a bunch of guys getting the better getting together to play Xbox. This tournament was serious business and involved competitors from, as you could see, from the two deceased victims alone from all over the country as far as California. Esports is a big effing deal now, as uh, Joe Biden would say, as you had 150 competitors at that event, and they were playing over Saturday and Sunday for ties of $5,000. And the winner would move on to the uh, the final tournament in Las Vegas where the top prize is $125,000. Now, unfortunately... This heinous attack was live-streamed on Twitch while it was happening. Uh, fortunately, the video did cut out. Uh, it, it, you know, it cut to one of the uh, Madden football matches, uh, showing that the controller was unplugged, just as the shooting started. But just before the player cam was taken down, you could see a red dot from a laser appear on one of the players a few seconds before the, sh the first shot was heard. And even without the video, I'm not going to play that here, the audio was very clear, and it was obvious that people were being shot. So let's get into into this shooter, who some people, you know, um, that they don't want to give the uh, the guy too much credit. I can understand why they they've started calling him bitch boy, uh, and boy, does that name fit? The shooter was a piece of shit named David Katz. Now he lived in a wealthy part of South Baltimore called Federal Hill in a gated community. I mean, check out where he lived. I mean, this guy, he was living large. He He's used the following gamer tags that we know of. Uh, Raven's Champ, Bread, and Trex Have a Heart Attack. So, uh, Katz, uh, he previously won the Madden 17 Bills Club Championship in Buffalo, New York, back in 2017 for a uh, $10,000 prize. And, then he went on to lose in the uh, quarterfinals held in California last year. So this Cats guy was obviously a serious esports competitor who would travel all across the country to compete in Madden football tournaments. Now this 24-year-old piece of crap, witnesses say, was eliminated from the tournament on Sunday and seems to been, have been the trigger. They say he was all, he was acting weird. He was wearing the same clothes on Sunday that he competed in on Saturday, the day before. And so after he was eliminated from the term tournament in the elimination rounds, he uh, left briefly, and I'm guessing to go to his car and retrieve his gun, because it seems like he didn't have his gun at that point. He comes back, and the rest, shall we say, is history. I mean, he used a handgun, presumably with a laser sight, though it wouldn't have been necessary uh, you know, in a confined space packed with uh, 150 players and who knows how many tournament staff, uh, spectators, etc. So he starts shooting, 911 calls, they go out immediately, it's 1.34 p.m. Cops respond instantly within two minutes. By 1.36, cops are on the scene. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing they were nearby or in the complex. So this garbage human 
like a lot of these cowards, when the uh, good guys with guns show up, they take their own lives, as it's believed that Katz, that uh, he died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So let us not forget, you know, in addition to the two men who died, some of the wounded, they're in bad shape. They're going through a tough time as well. You have this guy, Timothy Anselimo, gamertag, uh, at O Larry 2 k He got shot three times. He has wounds in his chest and one of his hands. Uh, a fellow gamer by the name of Buktali Buktalide, was, he was able to retrieve his gaming bag and his phone, and he tweeted a picture of Timothy's bloody gaming bag. I mean, look at that. You have another guy, Fitzmagic13 on Twitter, says he needs foot surgery, and he was five feet away from cats when he was shooting. Apparently, his father jumped on him to protect him. Fortunately, the father didn't get shot doing it, so I, that's a small thing that went okay, I guess. Now, you know me. Whenever one of these things happens, I want to know more about this David Katz guy to see what 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 was going on with him and what the spin of the left-wing media is going to be. Well, it looks like some sleuths over at the Donald subreddit, they found some two-year-old posts from Raven's Champ. That's one of the, uh, the uh, gamer tags used by uh, the shooter David Katz. In what is to believed, it's believed that it's his Reddit account. So posts that make it clear that Raven's Champ, this David Katz, didn't think too much of, quote, Trump tards and Americans. So <laughs> it would seem that David Katz was a card-carrying member of the hashtag resistance movement. Now, I'm not going to sit here and place the blame on people like Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, or any of the myriad politicians and celebrities who make up the hashtag resistance, you know, for the violent actions of this madman. And it's been reported that David Katz may have had serious mental health problems while he was growing up. There are sealed mental health records in his parents' divorce case that I'm sure will soon come to light in the press. But you know that whenever a shooting occurs, the media, they blame Trump, the NRA, the GOP, gun manufacturers, gun culture, etc., etc. Even when no connection between those entities and a shooter can be established. But if a shooter were to have a history of, say, wearing a MAGA hat or even saying he voted for Trump, the media would have a field day running to every Republican politician they could find and ask if they disavow the violent rhetoric uh, or disassociate from the shooter. You'd have Jim Acosta screaming at the top of his lungs uh, at Donald Trump at uh, some White House event. You know the drill. Let's see if now that it's clear that David Katz was a Trump-hating SJW who didn't have any use for, quote, Americans, you know, people who love their country, the United States. Let's see if Wolf Blitzer, Don Lemon, Rachel Maddow, and that whole crowd are going to hold tearful monologues on their new shows, lamenting the violent rhetoric of the hashtag resistance movement and Trump haters who may have influenced this man to resort to violence. I mean, that's what they've done before in shooting after shooting previously. But nope. Just as in the case with the shooter who shot up Steve Scalise and the GOP baseball team practicing at uh, Virginia baseball fields, something tells me that this is going to be another case of a shooter whose anti-Trump beliefs will go unexamined and the story quickly shunted aside if the narrative grows too problematic and deviates too much from the approved narrative. Something tells me we'll hear about violent video games or some other nonsense Anything to avoid the things that would really cut down on this violence. I mean, I mean let's talk about this uh, incident specifically. I mean, security at these esports events, it's got to improve. I mean, hell, what security? If anyone has ever gone to one of these events, security is usually either minimal or it doesn't exist at all. You could just walk right in. I mean, this event was held in another so-called gun-free zone packing hundreds of potential targets into a confined space and ripe for someone with bad intentions to exploit that. Esport events, they make big money. I mean, just look at the prizes. You think they're giving those prizes away? They're not making a, a you know money hand over fist? These events are very profitable. So if I were co a competitor or, or especially a big name like Ninja or a big gaming YouTuber that just wants to attend one of these things, we need to put pressure on the companies 
that are holding these gaming related events like the Madden tournament spend a little money on security pat downs wanding something if you're going to forbid the public from carrying guns inside your venue then you have to be responsible for security at that venue you can't tell people that they have to leave their guns outside and then leave them sitting there like sitting ducks with no weapon of any kind no no weapon screening to separate the wolves from the sheep anyway just keep an eye on the news in the next couple of days see if they even mention David Katz being anti-Trump or anti-American, my guess is they're going to ignore it. But if it does get out, they'll just quickly move on to another story if containment breaks. That's all for this new Unrealist. Like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to keep up with the new content. Check out the channel on BitChute, sub there if you're on that platform. And if you want to take a more direct role in supporting the channel, follow the Patreon link below. You guys have been great. Thanks for watching.